Good morning, everyone. Uh, this is a, a, a event that I've really been looking forward to. Um, we started a, a partnership with Graduation Alliance, and this is kind of the uh, start of kicking this off in a very formal way, in a very public way. And uh, I don't know if we could have picked a better spot. Uh, we are here at the mall, and uh, I want to appreciate uh, Nathan Damp, who is uh, the person that operates and, and, and manages this entire mall. And he was receptive to holding this and appreciate your willingness to partner with us. Uh, they partner with us on uh, us being able to share all of our magnet uh, options. But to have an event like this makes sense because we're trying to capture teenagers that may have fallen through the cracks. And where do kids hang out? The mall. Okay, so this is almost symbolic. Um, the other thing is that when you think about kids falling through cracks, what you gotta do is we gotta surround people, fill in the cracks, and we've got that with a great array of people here today to help us uh, fill in the cracks. Um, so yeah, this is an exciting day, and the effort that we're making right now is that we really truly wanna try to find every possible approach that we can to bring kids across the finish line. We do not want to have one young person not graduate because it has such an impact on their long-term life. It impacts their ability for wages, it impacts their ability for career opportunities, it impacts their ability to support their own families. It can create a hardship within the system, so to speak, whatever that system might be, of uh, folks having a more difficult life and it even impacts their medical care. So all those things are very, very important. Um, we know that if we continue to try to reach out, that may just be the thing that, that kids need, that they just need that little extra touch, that little extra nudge to push them into a place where uh, they see that the people do care about them and that they are, we're not letting them go. Um, so we are excited to partner with the Graduation Alliance today. We're very appreciative of the community partners that I have around me uh, today, and, and I want to introduce those folks. Um, first off, uh, with Graduation Alliance, we have Mr. Greg Harp and Ms. Farah Lamone, who's here today uh, to help us, and, and appreciate Greg and his partnership. Uh, locally, Ms. Ruth Whitney has been a part of this from the get-go, and really originally came to me with the idea, and I want to call her out. I want to thank our LRSD staff, Pam Smith, for setting this all up, and her team, but also our head of counseling is here, Ms. Grayson, and, and uh, she's been a proponent of this from the get-go. appreciate that. Community partners, it starts with the State Board of Education. When you got the, the chair of the State Board of Education, Ms. Dean, who happens to also be a Little Rock resident, when I made the call to her, it was absolutely. Uh, I will be there in a heartbeat. And Ms. Dean, of course, not only cares about kids, but she cares about community and how community can work together to go make a difference on, on very targeted goals. And she's been a huge proponent of that. Dr. Fitz Hill is with us also from the State Board of Education. He's also the chairman of our uh, Athletic Foundation in Little Rock School District and is a champion of trying to connect with kids in whichever fashion we can. And we know that when kids are connected, good things happen and, and we appreciate Dr. Hill. Uh, one of our newest legislators uh, that is in Little Rock is Representative Denise Innett. Ms. Innett is a, let's see which direction, she's right behind me. <laughs> she is a, uh, a, a parent first. I know that's what she would want to share. She's a parent first. Her children are in Little Rock School District, um, but also an individual that has always, in the span of time that I've known her, always trying to find ways to uh, commit and, and support young people, especially those that have challenges. Miguel Lopez, a banker and Miguel's right behind me as well. Um, I give him a bad time, say he's in charge of the Federal Reserve Board, but he's actually uh, now with Encore Bank and um, has been a, a person that grew up right here in Little Rock and understands some of the challenges of being uh, a young person and, and what it takes to get through uh, and has been successful and he has been an asset to our community uh, and to me and to Little Rock School District and appreciate be him being here. Um, Chief Finks is here. Uh, Chief Finks is uh, uh, obviously being represented, he's representing uh, Chief Humphrey who could not be here today and hated that he couldn't be here and so he sent his right hand and so we appreciate the Chief for being here. Chief Finks helps us uh, and of course we want to try to diminish <laughs> his opportunities to help us um, by engaging and having our young people tied into a, a real formal direction so appreciate him being here. Uh, we hope to still have later on Broadway Joe, radio personality 
that will be coming, uh, we hope, at the end of the press conference and helping make calls. And then finally, from the city, we have um, two individuals that are, uh, we hope to be here a little bit later this morning, and that's uh, City Director Wright and then also Mayor Scott. Um, and so we appreciate the fact that the city is always ready to partner with us um, to try to go make connections in the city, uh, to create the unity that, that Mayor Scott always is talking about, and that the mayor is uh, wanting to be front and center on this particular event and actually help us make phone calls. So we appreciate mayor's involvement. One of the key things that, um, if you look at, at the Graduation Alliance and the work that they do, um, it is very comprehensive. Um, it is an opportunity, and I, I don't want to steal Mr. Harp's words when he gets to get up and talk about what, what their role is, but um, they, they are uh, another whole vehicle, another whole avenue for the school district to reach out to young people who have got disconnected. And uh, some of you may not realize that we have a freshman student that starts with us and is with us for a, a full semester or full year. They actually could become a part of our permanent records no matter what happens. Even if that child chooses four or five different schools after they leave us, they still could, we could be on the hook for them as a graduation rate. And of course, graduation rates are important, but again, the most important thing today is connecting directly with young people to get them their diploma. And uh, we, I don't think we could find a better partner than the Graduation Alliance. Little Rock School District is the very first uh, partner with Graduation Alliance in the state of Arkansas. And so I'm proud to introduce Mr. Greg Harp, who will share a few words. Thank you, Superintendent. We appreciate it. First off, we're honored to be a partner with the Little Rock School District and to work to find disengaged students. And I have to say, very few communities pull together like I'm seeing Little Rock pull together. So thank you so much for all of you who've come to help. Uh, so the Graduation Alliance is poised and is here to solve one issue, and that is to help school districts and come alongside school districts to help them find students who've disengaged from school for whatever reason. What we know with working with hundreds of school districts in many states across the nation is that students often disengage for reasons that we may not realize in this room, and that is because they have life issues that happen. They might have a health issue. Their parents might have health issues. Many of the students we deal with um, because of health issues or other things that happen in life, um, a death in the family, they all of a sudden have to become the breadwinner and the provider for their family and their siblings. And school becomes not an option for them, and this particularly affects students who are least able to deal with it, who are uh, economically disadvantaged and unable and don't have the support systems around them in order to both earn, take care of siblings, or whatever the situation is, as well as work. And so it takes community leaders like this to come together, help us find those students, and help re-engage. The program in general is very simple, and that is finding a way to be flexible and help students who are in situations where they're unable to go to a traditional school or unable to keep a traditional schedule or even a modified schedule and create a flexible program for them. So that starts with asynchronous curriculum that allows them to work at two in the morning or two in the afternoon, seven in the morning, whatever fits their schedule, and that may change uh, daily for the types of students that we're talking about. But then layering in both accountability and support. And so with that flexibility comes expectations on students to finish their curriculum on a weekly basis, but yet they can do that again anytime during the day and then to provide support and to remove the barriers that they have. They may have technology barriers, and so as part of the program, we provide internet access and a laptop computer for them to have access. I know we've all, with what's happening recently, understand that issue deeply, and that's always been an issue for the students that we deal with, and so they have access to technology. But then also the human connection. Um, it takes people around them. A lot of the students we have may not have parents, or they have parents who, a, a parent who's working multiple jobs and does not have time to engage with them on the level that might be needed. And so having adult support, first of all, through a licensed teacher who is helping them understand academically. Second, through an academic coach who is there to help remind them why a high school diploma is important 
to remind them that someone who has a high school diploma makes $270,000 more per year that are more over their lifetime than someone who does not have a high school diploma and to help motivate them around why they need a high school diploma. And then what we call a local advocate who in normal times meets with them uh, at a coffee shop or a library or a community center to watch out for their social and emotional health. So we're really working to wrap support around the student to remove the barriers that they may have, whether they be social barriers, health barriers, um, food barriers, housing barriers, whatever those are, to connect them with the resources in the community, which is why it's so important to have these leaders here, so that we can remove those barriers and help that student ultimately get to high school, and that is just one pathway, and then on to an industry credential or college, or whatever fits there, so they can have a sustainable wage 